boys were the most vicious and ruthless. Marvin was called Shy Boy, and Pierre was called Boo Boo. They were absolute cold-blooded killers. A real chaotic scene. But as you walked in, you could still smell the, the gun powder, the gun smoke still in the air. The place silent with fear. Veteran investigators who would later see this surveillance tape call it one of the most cold-blooded, vicious murders they've ever seen. As the world was wrapped up in the O.J. Simpson case, a violent gang was emerging in Los Angeles. This gang would go on to grip the San Fernando Valley, spreading terror and death everywhere they went. They're known as the Asian Boys, or ABZ. In the summer of 1995, the gang would go on a violent rampage, terrorizing people and leaving bodies littered all across the valley, turning the previously peaceful summer red. That terrifying summer has come to be known as the Summer of Madness. So let's dive right in and explore how the Asian boys became the most brutal Asian gang terrorizing U.S. streets. And these guys were the real deal. They really were ruthless and brutal. Very violent. So I'm talking about murders, numerous hundreds of other crimes and home invasion robberies, burglaries, extortions, everything with them. September 1995, first responders were called to a small house in Van Nuys, and as they made their way to do the job they'd done millions of times before, they had no idea the level of horror they were about to witness. Mr. and Mrs. Gregory, a random couple who lived in the valley, were sleeping quietly at home with their two children when they heard the sound of glass breaking in the distance. Mr. Gregory got up to go check what the sound was as he quietly walked to the living room in the dark of night with only the moonlight illuminating his path. He was immediately surrounded by three men. The homeowner, Mr. Gregory, tries to defend his family. Totally innocent person. What happened next was an act so inhuman, it could only be described as animalistic. For whatever reason, one of them got nervous and he just fires off around. This then sets off almost like a chain reaction. All three of them start to unload their guns into Mr. Gregory. The Asian boys opened fire on Mr. Gregory at close range, which meant his entire body was littered with bullet wounds even after he was clearly dead. His wife, five-year-old daughter, and baby were all witnesses to the awful onslaught that seemed to be a result of a robbery gone wrong. That brutal murder kick-started the summer of madness, and by the time the summer came to an end, the Asian boys had left their mark on the streets of America as one of the most vicious gangs to terrorize L.A. At that point in time, they didn't care because the only thing that was on their mind was violence. They enjoyed the adrenaline rush that came from killing other human beings. With tales of their violence going far and wide in the United States, you would think the founding members of the Asian Boys grew up on the streets and were involved in crime before they could even talk. But Marvin Mercado, AKA Shy Boy, and Pierre Mercado, AKA Boo Boo, were the opposite of that. They were both born in the United States to Filipino parents. Their father was an engineer and their mother worked in real estate. Before they became notorious gang members, they were very bright kids who came from a middle-income family and grew up in an apartment complex in Van Nuys. State. Everyone kind of knew that they were good students. But in 1994, as the Mercado brothers grew from boys to young men, a desperate need for protection sent their lives on a dark path. This apartment building was initially predominantly Latino. Some immigrants from Southeast Asia started to move into that apartment building. When Asians started to move into that apartment building, there was already a gang in place. This gang called the Valerio Street Gang began to bully the young Asian kids. The boys were picked on and terrorized to the point of living in fear in their own homes until one day they had enough. As more Asian boys began to move into that building, suddenly they were no longer completely outnumbered by the Valerio Street Gang. That's when they formed the Asian Boys Gang, a gang born out of a need for self-preservation. The boys banded together as a show of strength against the Latinos. But unfortunately for everyone, the bullied would soon become the bullies. They were both uh, in the upper echelon of uh, the Van Nuys Asian boys. Uh, a bit different personalities, but they were both leaders and shot callers in that gang. When the Asian Boys Gang was formed, they were hardly known or feared in their apartment building, let alone the city of LA. But as time went on and they successfully protected themselves from the local Hispanic gang, the gang's purpose changed. As their numbers increased, so did their desire to dominate. And to do that, they needed weapons. To get weapons, they needed money. And to get money, they would resort to sinister acts. The Asian Boys, led by Marvin Mercado, nicknamed Shy Boy for his quiet but deadly leadership skills, and Pierre Mercado, known as 
Lord's Boo Boo began breaking into homes to steal money and valuables, anything they could lay their hands on to make money. They decided that the best people to target were their own people. They knew Asians in that area were immigrants and didn't trust the banks, so they often kept their money and valuables stored at home with them. They are also less likely to report any theft or violence to the authorities because they don't trust them. The gang would break into such homes and steal the savings and source of livelihood. They would try to get money by any means necessary, not caring that these were the very people they banded together to protect. They engaged in wholesale violence. They preyed upon their own people, you know, like parasites. The greatest fear for anyone in society is that you can be doing nothing wrong and be accosted or killed. That was a frightening summer for the people in uh, San Fernando Valley. But the true violence began when the Asian boys realized they were not the only Asian gangs in town, and they decided that if they couldn't be the only Asian gang in town, they were going to be the most terrifying. Just as the Asian boys were beginning to build their reputation as one of the most feared gangs in the area, they discovered they had competition, the Wa Ching. The Wa Ching was an Asian street gang primarily operating in San Francisco, but with factions all over the U.S., including the San Fernando Valley. One of the things that stood in their way were the Wa Ching. The Wa Ching and the Asian boys became rivals. While it is common to see rival gang members fight over street corners from which to sell narcotics, it is pretty uncommon to see rival gangs fight over pool halls. The Asian boys did not deal in narcotics. Their crime of choice was burglaries, armed robberies, and murders. But there was something they wanted and desperately fought for, their own hangout space. The Asian boys had a particular pool hall in El Monte, California. They liked to frequent to unwind from the day's crime. But they were not the only ones. Their arch nemesis, Hua Ching, also loved that particular pool hall. In December 19. In 1993, some members of the Asian boys headed for their favorite hangout spot, only to find that it was already occupied by some members of the Hua Ching. When both gangs came face to face, violence erupted. Weapons came out and loud bangs of bullets being fired and hitting the ground filled the pool hall. The once cheerful hall was suddenly quiet as people hid under, completely terrified they would not make it home. The surveillance footage in the hall captured a chilling encounter between one member of the Asian boys and another member of the Hua Ching. The member of the Hua Ching fired his weapon directly into the head of the member of the Asian boys. The place silent with fear. Veteran investigators who would later see this surveillance tape call it one of the most cold-blooded, vicious murders they've ever seen. That hit on one of their own didn't go unnoticed by the Asian boys as they vowed to exact revenge. The face-to-face -face with members of the watching awoke something in the Asian boys they knew to not be messed with. They needed to cement themselves as the most ruthless gang in the area, and how best to do that than to attack the gang that currently holds that title. In 1995, they had finally amassed enough members and weapons to fight back. They went for the group that made their lives a living hell when they were younger, the gang for which the Asian boys were formed, the Valerio Street gang. The leader of the gang, Marvin Mercado, called his members together, their task, to make an example out of the Valerio Street gang. They gathered weapons, including assault rifles, numerous handguns, shotguns, and lots and lots of ammunition. They armed themselves to the teeth, quite frankly. Knowing exactly where members of the gang hang out, they put their sinister plan in motion. This caravan of two cars drives past this corner with numerous uh, Valerio Street gang members. And then they pull a U-turn. And as they re-approach this group on the corner, they start shooting. The Valerio gang members immediately ran back into the apartment building to take cover. But unfortunately, not all of them were fast enough. Four of the Asian boys basically just unloaded their guns. But even after they were hit and lay there dying, Marvin Mercado was not satisfied. He needed to see the look in their eyes as life drained from it. He stepped out of the car, moved till he's standing right on top of them, aims his weapon at them, and unloaded everything at close range. The Valerio gang members received the message loud and clear. There was a new boss in town, and his reign of terror would change the summer of 95 forever. A real chaotic scene. But as you walked in, you could still smell the... The gun powder, the gun smoke still in the air. That day marked the beginning of violence like never seen before in the San Fernando Valley. They believe this murder 
sparked a chain of at least 10 other senseless killings in the L.A. area by Asian boys gang members. In July 1995, Louisiana was just beginning to experience its first ray of summer, and people were outside in their numbers, trying to catch a tan. But in the San Fernando Valley, people were desperately trying not to catch a bullet. After eliminating the members of the Valerio Street Gang, the ABZ were unstoppable, save for the watching. They practically ruled the San Fernando Valley. Only weeks after the attack on the Valerio Street Gang, the ABZ would find the perfect opportunity to strike back at their fierce rival, the watching, or so they thought. Early August 1995, the Mercado brothers received a call from the girlfriend of one of their members. She revealed to them the location of some members of the watching. She said she was in a coffee shop that had video games, and there were three Chinese boys she thought were watching, hanging out, and playing video games. The boys had entered the name watching into the video game to register their scores, and the girlfriend saw that. The Asian boys immediately piled into their cars and followed the boys onto Interstate 10. Once they pulled up a Inside the boys who were driving a Nissan Sentra, they unleashed horrors. There are two assault rifles firing into the Sentra. 17 casings were found on the I-10 freeway. They would later find out that the boys were not members of the watching. They were just innocent young boys on their way home from a day of fun. We didn't have evidence that they were active watching gang members. This mistake would not stop the Asian boys on their path to domination. It would fuel them even more. A few weeks after the I-10 massacre, the Asian boys struck again. They were complete psychopaths that preyed on very innocent people, you know, their own people. In the same manner as the I-10 murders, the ABZ were called by someone they knew and told there were members of the Wa Ching in an arcade store. They got their weapons ready, piled into their cars, and headed for the arcade store. They followed the boys as they drove out onto the street, and once they got their opportunity, rained so many bullets on them that the car the boys were in was completely covered with holes by some miracle. Several of the boys survived the attack, but one high school kid did not. He'd gone out with his friends to enjoy the summer break before school resumed. His parents never saw him alive again. At this point, summer was nearing its end, but the Asian boys were just getting started. Law enforcement in Los Angeles, especially the Los Angeles Police Department and the Sheriff's Department, were perplexed because there was one violent incident after another. Law enforcement in Los Angeles was getting frustrated. There had been many seemingly unconnected killings in different jurisdictions all over the city. They were no closer to solving them, and the bodies kept piling. That was a frightening summer for the people in the San Fernando Valley. When you get that many young people being killed, most of them for no reason. You want to solve it. During this horrifying time, there was a lot of pressure on the LAPD to bring the gang members to justice. But there was only one problem. The attacks were happening in different jurisdictions and they couldn't connect them. It would take a seven-man task force to finally track them down. And even then, it was not an easy task as the Asian boys would outsmart and elude authorities for years. Once they figured out it was one gang committing all that violence, the LAPD began the process of tracking them. One of the things that really helped to tie all of these cases and shootings together. All these shootings were interconnected by ballistics evidence. Same guns being used. While the task force was heavy at work, trying to piece together the information they needed to take Asian boys down, the ABZ continued their rampage, completely unaware their end was soon to come. In March 1996, Asian boys struck again, and the most disturbing thing about this hit, it had no motive. It wasn't about money or revenge. They just wanted to hurt people, massively. A party was going on in Sherman Ways, called the Sherman Way Flyer Party, and many people were gathered, partying the night away. There were groups of young people getting together, sporting haircuts and fashions that were kind of reminiscent of Asian gang attire, but uh, really there weren't gang members. They were all innocent kids. The Asian boys descended on the party. Their intention was not to party, but to turn a night of dancing into a night of horror. Marvin took weapons into the party and immediately started firing into the crowd. He hit one person fatally and wounded two people with his firearm, but that wasn't enough for Marvin. He wanted more. Marvin grabs a hand grenade, pulls the pin. Fortunately for everyone who was there that night, Marvin's plans failed. He threw a hand grenade into the group of people, but it didn't detonate. 
That's pretty crazy. That was an epic fail for the ABC, and the task force was closing in. Luckily for everyone who lived in the valley, the task force came to that party at the right time and caught the Asian boys red-handed. All of the uh, main players that we were looking at were arrested. The residents of San Fernando Valley rejoiced at the arrest of people who had made them scared to leave their houses. The law enforcement officers who apprehended them were commended for the good job they did in getting the gang off the streets. But little did they know, it wasn't over yet. Unfortunately, the district attorney didn't feel we had enough for uh, prosecution, so all of our guys were released. While the investigators did more work to bring a case against the Asian boys, the boys disappeared. It would take investigators 10 years to find the Asian boys again, and during that time, they continued to reign horror in San Fernando Valley, even from thousands of miles away. Hey, did you enjoy hearing about the Asian boys? Please like and subscribe for more.